wheelchair ramp. Well, you've gotten so big, I just can't lift you anymore. But it's so important to me. What's so important to Adrian? You haven't been to see Santa since you were six. Well, it's sort of complicated. I know that this isn't the real Santa, and that Santa always symbolically represents the Christmas spirit. But with the ever-increasing media towards blame consumer capitalism, I'm just not sure what to make it the whole Christmas thing. And I was hoping that Santa, even a skinny one with the loudest fake beard, would help there. <laughs> Honey, that's a pretty lofty conflict you've got brewing there. I know. Sometimes I surprise myself. Mm, well, all I can do is try. Hey, Santa. I think there's some way we could get my daughter up to see you. I can't lift her anymore, and well, you didn't provide a wheelchair ramp. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's not politically correct, but there's nothing I can do for you. And why is that? Well, I, you see, it's like this. The Santa Claus in the mall insurance policy does not allow me or my elves to lift, carry, or convey any child with any noticeable or obvious impairment, disability, or handicap for any reason whatsoever. <laughs> Besides, the Santa Elf Union contracts won't allow it because they have a lot of worker comp claims last year. It's a wimpy CNS, if you know what I mean. You know, it's all spelled out right here in the rule sign where it says, your special happy time with Santa. And according to Santa's watch, my shift's been over for about five minutes, so I know you'll understand. <laughs> Oh, I understand, all right, but I don't know if my daughter will. What I also know is you're just a Scrooge in a cheap Santa suit. I guess my child's happiness is not nearly as important to you as getting home to watch reruns of Gilligan's Island and drinking liberally spiked eggnog. Look, lady, you have no idea what it takes to be Santa to a thousand screaming brats every day for a month. So get off my back. Wait just a minute there, Bob. Talk to the mitten. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bless your soul. Oh, 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 I heard her first. Oh, 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 I suppose you're right. A bit more diplomacy would have been better. I'll see if I can have a more civilized word with him tomorrow. You never know. He may come around. I guess that'll help. I'll try not to give my hopes up. I'm kind of tired of being disappointed. What do you mean? Well, things haven't gone very smoothly for quite a while now. I mean, I used to get around pretty well in my crutches. That was okay. But now I'm stuck in this stupid chair. And the kids at school, they used to at least pretend to include me in the games and stuff. But not anymore. And you keep saying that money's tight and you have to be careful with every single penny. And it's no secret that you haven't been very happy since Dad left. And I just keep thinking that all the problems that we have are because of me. That it's all my fault. Now you listen to me, young lady. None of those things is your fault. It's certainly not your fault that arthritis keeps you in this chair. And if the other kids don't include you, well, that's just their selfishness showing through. And FYI, Missy, money is tight because your father left. Even with my job and his child support, we just don't make as much as we used to. Still, our expenses are about the same, so things are just a little tighter. That's all. We're really doing okay. You just have to be careful. And don't you think for a minute that you had anything to do with your father leaving? 
next year, things will be better. Yeah, I'm sure to do. I'm just struggling with this stupid comment about Christmas. Hello, Mr. Delmonico. Well, good evening, Nancy. Thought you left an hour ago. I did. I went home to get Adrian. It's nice to see you again. So what did Santa have to... Wait a minute. Aren't you a little old when you're talking to Santa? <laughs> well, Mr. Delmonico, it's like this. You see, I'm not sure I get the whole Christmas thing, at least the true nature of the holiday. And I was hoping that Santa could help me understand it more. Oh. Well, why don't we talk about it for a while? Maybe I can help. Don't mean to kid you, Mr. Delmonico. Oh, no, that's okay. Ever since Ms. Delmonico died, I have not much to go home to. And I was just getting ready to make a bank deposit and come back and start looking over the inventory some more. You know, just another day at the office. I'm sorry about your wife. What will you be doing for Christmas this year? Well, same as usual, it seems. Uh, my daughter and her family are flying in from Tampa for Christmas Eve. You know, she married a nice Jewish boy. He's a doctor, and they have a nice, he's got a nice practice going on in St. Pete. I didn't think you were Jewish. Oh, you're right, I'm not. I, no, I'm not. I'm, well, I, I guess I'm not really anything. My parents used to go to the Orthodox Church, very, very faithful. I, on the other hand, I haven't been in a church except for weddings and funerals since I was old, so about 13. So you don't believe in God? Oh, I didn't say that. I think that there's something or someone out there that's greater than all of us. But, you know, with everybody fighting over who's right and who's wrong, I just decided, oh, what's the point? And, you know, I just decided, you know, if God wanted us to find him, I think he'd have made it easier. You know, maybe even drawn us a map so we'd know where to look. So, what's Christmas to you? Christmas to me is family. When Celeste, that was my wife, when Celeste was alive, we used to have a big tree right, right in the Middle of the in the middle of the, the living room, and right at the top we had a lit star. She would make sure there were plenty of presents for everyone, and she made cookies for the mailman and for the delivery truck driver, pretty much everybody else in the neighborhood. And you know, every week from Thanksgiving to New Year's, we were off to a party over there or some other function. And uh, some weeks we would go to three or four. That sounds like a lot of fun. Well, fun if you like that sort of thing. She always loved parties, and so we always went. I personally, I could stay at home and <laughs> curl up on the fire and read a book. But I would have never denied her happiness, so we always went to things. And, uh, you know, and I'm not saying it's all bad. We met lots of influential and very interesting people. I guess I've probably met six city council members and three mayors and a couple of congressmen and even a senator. That was kind of nice. And sometimes they would even come into the come into the store for presents. Of course, that's when we were that was before we moved to the big fancy mall. Boy, it doesn't sound like you like the mall. Oh, it's okay, I guess. There's certainly more traffic. But, you know, I miss the old downtown shopping district. You know, people would come in and visit me and say hello just because they wanted to. Not because they were in some kind of a big hurry on the way to the mega discount store. You know, I knew all of my customers by name. They knew me. I knew their kids. I knew when they had their first communion. I knew when they had, uh, I knew about all of the proms. 
I knew when they were getting married. A lot of those kids were just like my own nieces and nephews. I felt like I had the biggest family in the world. And you know, that was nice, especially around Christmas, because some of them brought me presents. <laughs> that does sound nice. So, then why did you move this tour to here? Oh, Adrian, we had to. Nobody shops downtown anymore. And you know that my first week here at the mall, I had three times as many customers as I did my entire last month downtown. But even with all those customers, it's getting harder and harder to show a profit and make a living. I thought the store was doing pretty well. Oh, thanks to salespeople like you, Nancy, we're getting by. Your mother is always in the top two or three in sales every month, just like clockwork. I can always count on you. But, you know, most people don't know what it takes to keep a big store like this in the black. Merchandise and shipping are going up. Profit margins are going down. It's just getting harder and harder to, to show a profit. Of course, that wasn't a big deal before, but now with Celeste gone, my main, my main focus is to make sure that my kids and grandkids have plenty when I'm gone. So now, my goal is to make enough money so that they're taken care of. Still, retail is a big, tough business to be in. And especially when you're trying to anticipate the ever-changing wants and whims of a very, very fickle public. Gosh, I didn't know things were so bad. Uh, I have no complaints about your work, Nancy. You know, if all of my workers worked as hard as you do, I could just sit in my office and grow fat. <laughs> or fat <and> grow. <laughs> uh, but you know, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. Really, I like the challenge. Still, as I get older, sometimes, sometimes I like to stop and sniff the roses. You know, every now and again. I think I know what you mean. Well, we shouldn't keep you any longer. Thank you, Mrs. Elmano, for sharing your perspective on this Christmas thing. I'm not sure I get it yet, but thank you. You're very welcome. Now, you take your mom home and make sure that she gets plenty of rest. Tomorrow, we've got to do a spot inventory check, so we're going to be here later than usual. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, Nancy, mm -hmm. do you suppose the Safeway would have a goose? Mm -hmm. My daughter has asked me to pick one up, and she better be cooking it because I don't know a goose from a barbecued owl. <laughs> <laughs> well, a goose is unusual, and they probably have one, but I'll call first if I were you, just to be sure. Thanks, that's a good idea. Well, good night, you too. Good night. Good night. It's like just another evening in paradise. Sure, we'll be glad when we get back to regular hours next week, though. Why is that, Jeremy? Are we uh, cramping your style here? We got hot date tonight? <laughs> I think you know me better than that. I know, it's just fun to tease. Besides, I don't know about you, but the extra hours sure doesn't hurt my bank account, I mean. Yeah, surplus cash sure does help ease the pain of my shabby love life. <laughs> oh, brother. You know, you're not fooling anyone, right? Hey, okay, look, Santa's chair. I'll play Santa, and you can tell me everything you have on your Christmas list. Come on, little boy, Santa, just wait a minute. I don't know. 
I haven't believed in Santa Claus for a long time. Besides, I don't want to squish it. I can take it. Hurry up! Come on, because then it's my turn. You're sure I won't crush it? Okay, little boy, have you been naughty or nice this year? Check your list, Santa. <laughs> nah, I've tried to be nice. Besides, there's really not all that much I want this year. What I would like is enough cash to make good on my church building project pledge. And again, my job pretty much takes care of that. I guess, continued good health for friends and family. I'm not sure how you can affect that. See what you can do. A new cell phone for this one that keeps crapping out on me. Others, 
You know, it's kind of like looking in the mirror. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm drop dead gorgeous, nor do I have the body to match, but you know, I'm not chopped liver either. Wouldn't you agree, Santa? Yes, <laughs> 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 The last part I mentioned, that the woman of my dreams is a strong Christian. I wouldn't ask you to change your belief structure for a shot of romance. I mean, don't get me wrong, nothing would please me more than to see you come to know me, but for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. I see. And I'll try to understand, which I don't at all at the moment, but you know what? It's fine. Let's just go back to work. I'll go to the South Corridor, you go north. No, no, it's okay. It's my fault. I started it. It's the story of my life. Every time I meet a really great guy, I'm to this or I'm not enough that. And you know what, Jeremy? You're a really great guy. You're really caring and you're really sweet. And I couldn't help but just get caught up for just a moment. But maybe, just maybe you were the one. Okay. My love life is a total disaster. I mean, my last boyfriend was a total jerk. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Okay. <clears throat> we should get back to the breakfast. Why don't we meet back here in an hour? We'll talk some more together. might be 
be able to give her a new perspective. That's all. That's all? I'm supposed to reinvent Christmas for your daughter? Where's that supposed to come from? I'm a mall Santa. I make $8.50 an hour. And I'm somehow gifted with the ability to solve the holiday crisis for some crippled kid? I don't think so. Find somebody else. Who might you suggest? You're supposed to be Christmas for kids. Oh, don't lay that one on me. Jolly old St. Nick is Christmas. I don't even know if I believe in Christmas. It's all about the stuff. You should know that. They don't pay me enough to, to come up with some fabricating thing for kids to feel good about their holidays. Right now, I listen to their greeting wish list, pose for pictures, and hand out candy canes. That's it. Anything else? It's not my job description. Oh, right, Scrooge across. Have it your way. I really do hope a reindeer bites you on the butt. <laughs> this time, I mean it. Best day of my third grade year. 
<laughs> Guilty picture. Well, you know, Rob, I believe in the power of prayer, especially when times are tough. I'd be willing to pray with you about all this stuff going on in your life. Uh, you know, Jeremy, I'm really not that kind of a religious kind of guy. <laughs> Fair enough. So for the time being, I'll just pray for you. But the offer still stands anytime. Okay, that's fine. I guess that's right. Jeremy? What can Santa bring you for Christmas? Same thing as every year, Santa. The girl of my dreams. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what's up? Top level of the parking garage, there's been some vandalism. What happened? I don't know. There's some snow spray across some of the windshields, but some of them have had the valve stems loosened and have flat tires. Management wants you up there for crowd control right. and um, assess the damage. I'll take care of things down here. Yeah. yeah, I'll give John at the auto center a call. We need some new valve stems and a compressor. We'll get them on their way as soon as possible.
See, in our schools, we teach our kids to tolerate others and their religions. And by doing that, no one has to feel bad about their heritage or you know, where they come from. And then, well, um, we believe that no one should feel offended by what other people believe. And so we all become one in spirit, and that just creates a better society for all. Okay, but please do tell me, how are the children to learn to be tolerant of others when the others are forbidden to show or even speak of the tradition and customs that make them different? And what about the cultural and religious differences that define each individual within his family and his neighborhood and even within society? Do these things count for nothing? I'm sure they count for something, just not everywhere. See, we live in a society that's free of religious persecution. So the separation of church and state requires that our government show no favoritism toward religious matters. And so that's why everywhere you go, all religions are equally represented. Okay, please forgive me, but I think there are two problems with what you have just said. First, there is great confusion around the phrase separation of church and state. Now, it is my understanding that this phrase does not even appear in your constitution, yet many, many Americans act as if it does. And second, by allowing anything at all to be part of your, how do you say, inclusion, you lose the distinction of each individual within the everything. And all becomes nothing. You know, it's very sad to me that you have lost your heritage. Mr. Dermonico, please do help me to get these things to my car. Of course, Mr.
Lord in just as soon as I get Adrian from the center. Oh, that'll be fine, Nancy. It's not in a big hurry. It'll still be here when we get back. All right. What is this? Hello, Jeremy. It's Dominic Del Monaco. Yes, yes, yes. Very busy. Very, yeah. Listen, uh, Jeremy, the reason I'm calling is there's been some vandalism in front of my store. No? No, not the store itself. Looks like someone has trashed the nativity in the holiday display. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, I don't know. It's hard to tell. There are cases everywhere. I'm not sure. Well, I guess they could all be here, maybe. You're coming right up? Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to start putting things back. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Who would do something like this? This just, just makes me so angry. Good evening, Doctor. You didn't happen to see who did this, did you? No, I did not. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's your job to keep an eye on things around here. The, the, Jeremy, this is ridiculous. You know, today we have the nativity, tomorrow my store, my employees. I, aren't you supposed to protect us from this sort of thing? Just a minute, Mr. Delmonico. We are doing our job. It's okay, baby. Dominic has a right to be upset. Those other people needed our help just as much, but we weren't here to take care of the situation. We still let him down. I'm sorry, Dominic. We will certainly try to be more vigilant in the future. After we get this cleaned up, I'll go check the video feed and we'll see if we can determine who did this. <sighs> well, <coughs> that's better. Um, Jeremy, I'm sorry I blew up at you. This sort of thing just, just makes me so angry. Who would do something like this? What is this? It looks filthy. Yuck. That appears to be a shepherd. You know, not a whole lot of people know much about shepherds. And more often than not, they really were quite smelly and dirty. Well, I mean, they spent 24 hours a day with their sheep. It's no wonder they were a mess. But the sheep, you know, they're not very smart. They depended on the shepherds for everything. Take them to the green pastures, to the watering holes. Without the shepherd, they literally just lay down and die. Now, on that first Christmas, the Bible tells us that shepherds, stinky, smelly ones that are scorned by decent people, were the first to witness the coming Messiah. On this night of the earth, an angel appeared and told them where to look for and where to find the baby. So off they went in search of Emmanuel. God with us. So they just left their sheep and went looking for this baby Jesus? Probably not. Well, you can see the sheep were so vulnerable that if they left them for even a short while, they met risk from predators. So most likely, can you see this? A bunch of ragtag shepherds leading hundreds of sheep right into the middle of the town of Bethlehem. I can just hear the townsfolk waking up going, Oh, man, what's that smell? That was nasty. I bet it was. Now, following the angel's instructions, the shepherds found the baby in a manger in a stable. For, as the story goes, there was no room for them at the end. So does that mean they were poor? They, all they could afford was a stable? Probably not. Well, you see, at that time, the government required every man to travel to his hometown for a census and a special tax. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like the government. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. And while Joseph probably could have afforded a nice room, there were so many travelers in town. There just weren't any rooms left. The only place they could stay was out back in the stable. And a stable like that is certainly not the Ritz. And chances are it wasn't even this nice. Well, you see, wood was so precious back then. They didn't make buildings, much less buildings for animals. 
more likely it was just a hollowed out cave on a hillside out back, just a space big enough to get a few animals out of the weather for the night. This is where God let his son be born? Well, I'm not what he chose. What do you mean chose? Who would choose such a place? Well, when you read the Old Testament, you see that the coming Messiah is a very special child. Hundreds of prophecies foretell who he is and how he will come. God was very aware of this special child. It wasn't by accident that Mary and Joseph were behind after the hotels were full. He orchestrated the events exactly as he wanted them. But Jeremy, it just seems so cruel to have the child born among the animals. Yeah, to us it does seem kind of cold and heartless, but God has his reasons for everything. You know, even today, when things seem dark and crazy, it's often God just trying to get our attention. Wait a minute. Are you saying that God uses our everyday circumstances just to see if we're listening? Yeah, sometimes he does. That's crazy. You know, you said that this was a night of miracles, plural. And you talked about angels appearing. I'm not sure that I understand all of that, but... What were other miracles? Well, the fact that Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem at all was a miracle. You see, they lived a very long way from that little town. But the Bible foretold that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Again, this was no accident. It was a miracle. Another is that the Messiah was supposed to be at the house of King David. Now, both Mary and Joseph traced their lineage back to King David. And the chances of this happening are very slim. And even though Joseph wasn't Jesus' biological father, the fact that both parents' ancestry fulfills the prophecy is a miracle. What do you mean Joseph wasn't Jesus' real father? <laughs> well, well, you see, according to Scripture, Mary was a virgin. The Holy Spirit came upon her and created the child within her womb. The virgin birth is another thing. I still don't get it. <laughs> I'll explain that to you later. In addition to that, even the heavens showed God's miracles. Now, whether the coming together of several celestial bodies or the formation of a new, very bright star, the way to the main was lit by a bright heavenly light. The shepherds followed this, as did the Magi. Hmm, the Magi meaning these guys? Yeah. Although, they weren't actually there on that first night. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. All of the nativities show that the Magi were there. I thought that they followed the star and arrived that same night. You know, and a lot of people do think that. And it would have been another miracle if that had happened. But the scriptures seem to indicate that the wise men saw the formation of the star and then began their journey, arriving many months or possibly even a couple of years later. Hmm. It was during that time that God's divine protection allowed Jesus to survive King Herod's wrath. I remember something about Herod killing all of the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's close. He ordered the death of all male children, age two and younger. He wanted to eliminate the child king before he, could, he was a threat to his own power. But God told Joseph in a dream to take baby Jesus to Egypt. Yeah, which he did. Until the coast was clear, right? Exactly. Until the coast was clear. Once King Herod died, they could go back to Israel. You know, this first night really was a night of miracles. Do you remember that line from the song of the little town of Bethlehem? The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Yeah. Yep. That's why Jesus came as he did. Now, how he did is really more of the Easter story. I think we're missing a baby Jesus in here. Oh. I see Mary and Joseph, and there's a donkey and a sheep, some shepherds and the wise men who supposed to be here yet. I don't see the either. No baby. Who would steal Jesus?
Jesus from the nativity. I don't know, but I've heard it's becoming an epidemic. One lady in Wisconsin has had her baby Jesus stolen on Christmas Eve five years in Canada. Like Hawkins. In one year, she even replaced baby Jesus with a death bag of dog food. She stole that too. <laughs> <laughs> Some churches are going to suck that they're installing video camera systems and GPS tracking devices in order to catch the bees. What is the world coming to? Yeah, that's a good question. I just don't believe people anymore. Well, like I said, you know, I'm going to take a look at the surveillance tapes and we'll see if we can determine who this was. Oh, okay. But with everything happening tonight, I think we all better be extra cautious. Mm -hmm. And Vic Victoria, we need to get back to our friends. Mm -hmm. I got the board for it. All right, let's go. <coughs> well, I'll get back to work on the inventory, Mr. Delano. Oh, thanks, Nancy. This whole incident's just, just, just got me way too upset. Uh, uh, just go ahead. Okay. Oh, now wait a minute. Why don't you go on ahead and go on to? Um, it's not that urgent and it'll keep it going. Are you sure? I'm sure. Just pick up, uh, just lock up after you get your stuff. Okay, we'll right. do. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. Adrian. Good night. I just need to get my coat, huh? I'll be back in a second. Okay. I'll be okay. All right. So, baby Jesus, wherever you are, you're supposed to be the miracle child, the coming Messiah, the Son of God. So why are you taking better care of us today? And if you can see, well, things haven't, well, they're a mess. And I bet you could fix it if you wanted to, but you're not even here. What is that? You ready to go, Adrian? Yeah, sure, Mom. Can you come here, Seth? There's something under the building. What are you trying to get? See that paper bag? Oh, yes, so well, there is. wonder what it's doing here.
sensitivity was all messed up, so I called security and we worked on it and tried to set it up. And I guess I left a deposit here when I went home. And I didn't think about it until I got into my driveway. And so I hurried back here. I looked all over the courtyard. I looked all over my store. Anywhere it could have been. It's, it's just gone. Man, it's terrible. And not that it's any bad business, but was it a lot of money? Well, uh, some people may not think so, but to me, $8,400, yes, is a lot of money. And it was all cash. And I always take the cash every day, deposit it just in case, and then I'll leave the rest of it to my accounting staff. Man, that stinks, and especially right before Christmas. Yeah, you're right. Well, look, I gotta go. I'm gonna check the store one more time. And if you uh, happen to see a paper bag full of money, <coughs> let me know. You betcha. I'll keep a lookout for that. <laughs> oh, look who it is. The producer of Win Reindeer Attack. Stuff doesn't make you happy. 
stuff just makes you want more stuff. So you're saying that materialism breeds materialism and not happiness. Exactly. But what's on TV non-stop, commercial after commercial, endlessly, buy, buy, buy. And what do the commercials say? You need this or you're not cool. Buy this and you'll be the girl. Buy that and your wife will really love you. Buy a George Foreman grill and you'll be instantly skinny. <laughs> skeptical by these messages. I am. The poor kids don't have any of that stuff. But TV <clears throat> says that stuff at Christmas is everything. The more the better. But then Mr. DeMonico the other night said that Christmas was about family. And then Jeremy said that Christmas was about a bunch of miracles about Jesus. And then there's you. Or at least the Western mythology surrounding Santa Claus with a myriad of possible explanations and a plethora of interpretations, the endless ramifications leave you with a conundrum. Myriad, plethora, conundrum? Sorry, just showing off. I can see that. Here's the question I have for you. What do you want Christmas to be about? Hmm. I haven't really thought about it like that. Let's see. What do I want Christmas to be about? Well, I do like the part about family. But with my dad gone, it's a lot harder than it used to be. And I also like the part about happiness. But not because of the presents. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like presents just as much as the next kid. But presents don't make me happy. And I think starting in November, we should leave our TVs turned off. Wow, that's really wise. <laughs> but what about me? I'm not really sure about you yet. I mean, I'm not sure that you live at the North Pole and make toys. But I still like you being the symbol for Christmas, and all that's good. You can stay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, what about the Jesus part? That's where I'm still really confused. You know, me too. You know, you said you had a wish list. Since we're here, give it to you. Okay, sure. It's not very long. First, I like a little bit of peace on Earth. I mean, there's so many wars going on, and a little bit of peace would be nice. Yes, it would, but I'm not sure Santa can make that happen. Okay. And then second, my mom needs to make a really hard decision, and I'd like a little bit of wisdom for her, so she can make the right choice. Well, Santa's not really good at making immaterial things happen, but I'll see what I can do. And then third, the Good Shepherd's Daycare Center needs a lot of money and fast. So, I'd like a big check for them. Wow, these are really grown up wish lists. Um, don't you want anything for yourself? Not really. My mom already got me a lot of presents and put them under the tree for me. But why don't you take my presents? and give them to the poor kids instead. I mean, I don't really need them. Well, it looks like you two are getting along splendidly. Your daughter is wise beyond your years. We had a great time, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah. Give me a hand. Absolutely.
let's get you to the center. And the rest of us better get ready for another day in paradise. You call this paradise? <laughs> Even a tax collector. 
tax collector? That's pretty low. <laughs> yes, it is. But for three years, he draws people to himself. Now, he speaks about the kingdom of heaven, but he does so in parables and riddles. Not exactly what the people expected. He performs miracles. He gives comfort to the hurting. He heals the sick. And he forgives the most grievous sins. And along the way, he angers the religious leaders to the point that they seem to kill him. I am not understanding why would the doing good works anger the Jewish leaders? Well, that's an excellent question. They felt he was a threat to the power of the people. See, every day, more and more people were leaving the established religion to follow Jesus. They felt powerless to stop it. They hated him for it. Wasn't he a good man, though? Uh, he was the best man ever. That's what irked them so much. Because you see, while he was man, he was also God. And not once <coughs> during his entire life did he sin. Not even when he was angry or putting the religious leaders in their place. And that is why his sacrifice was acceptable to the Bible. You've seen pictures of Christ on the cross, right? Oh, yes. They're everywhere. He died there. Yes, he did. But that's not the end of the story. You see, in the same way that God orchestrated all the events of Jesus' birth, God also planned out each detail of Jesus' death. His betrayal by Judas, his trial before Pontius Pilate, his carrying his cross to Calvary, his crucifixion, even his death on the cross were all events that were foretold hundreds of years before they happened just like the prophecies about his birth. And why? I was about to ask that question. Me too. Because God didn't want them, the people of Jesus' day, or us, to miss him. This was his supreme act of love for his people. It's like he laid it out all ahead of time. He said, this will be the coming of my son. He'll have these kind of parents. He'll be hated by the leaders of his day. And he'll die like this. And this is why. Because I love you. <clears throat> you see, the Bible teaches us that God loves the sin, but hates the sin. He wants us to live with him eternally, but we're separated from him by our own failures. This poses a problem for a loving God. What could he do? He sent his son. Exactly. He sent Jesus, the only person to live ever without sin. And what did Jesus do? He died in our place. He willingly went to his death so that we wouldn't have to. He bore our sins on the cross, and he died there. That is very, very sad. And it would be mad to see to his death. It would be tragic if that were the end of the story. There's more? Yes, there is. You see, this is why the miracles of Christmas are nothing without the hope of Easter. What began with the baby in the manger was fulfilled by Christ on the cross. Almost. You see, when he died, they took him down and they put him in the tomb and sealed him because he really was dead. Three days later, the Father gave him back his life and Jesus rose from him alive. It's as if the Father looked on him and said, I accept the sacrifice that sinless Jesus made for every human sinner. That's why he's alive today. And now we can know the Father because the penalty for our sin has been paid. That's a lot to handle. Mm, yes, it is. So we don't have to do anything? Sounds like God pretty much did it all, doesn't it? And actually, there's really only one thing each of us has to do for the story to have a happy end. Why do I suspect that this has something to do with money? <laughs> Not this time. The only thing each of us has to do is believe on Jesus' sacrifice and his resurrection and accept the gift of eternal life with the God who created us and loves us more than anything in the world. 
Now, I want to ask each of you a very personal question. And if you can honestly answer yes, your lives will be changed drastically forever. Here's the question. Do you believe that the baby of Christmas became the Christ of Easter and died in your place for your sin so you could have eternal life? Dominic, how about you? Strangely enough, I do. I really do. Nancy? For the first time, it all makes sense, and yes, I do too. Mr. Porter? What do you are saying here today? It goes against everything I was ever taught. In my heart of hearts, I cannot deny it. Rob? Are you sure there's no hidden surcharges? Or <laughs> Anything else I have to do with the firstborn or anything on death to make this whole thing work? It's a free gift for any and all who will take it. Count me in. Adrian? It just seems right. I can see why people say Jesus is the reason for the season. Without him, none of it makes sense. Uh, this is so great. We're all now members of the family of God. There's a whole bunch of really cool things happen to each of you. And if I were to tell you about all of them, we'd be here until New Year's Eve. Suffice it to say, I think this Christmas will be very special for all of us. Why not? We could all use another miracle or two. 
to today. Keep this up and we'll find some way to help the sinner. I've got an idea. I'll match the reward money and give it in your name and in yours, Adrian. That's very generous, Mr. Delmonico, and it's a great idea. Boy, I am feeling really hungry, like right now for milk and cookies. What? <laughs> No, not really. But a good chicken fried steak. Now that would be good. Hey, the diner's open just down the way. Let's all go. Let's all go. Yes. yes let's all go. My treat. What'd she say? Christmas. 